Swedish scientists have concluded that a weak nuclear explosion occurred during the Chernobyl accident. The experts analyzed the most likely course of nuclear reactions in the reactor and modeled meteorological conditions for the spread of decay products. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant took place on April 26, 1986. The catastrophe threatened the development of nuclear energy worldwide. A 30-kilometer exclusion zone was created around the plant. Radioactive fallout fell even in the Leningrad region, and cesium isotopes were found in elevated concentrations in lichen and reindeer meat in the Arctic regions of Russia. There are various versions of the causes of the disaster. Most often they point to improper actions of the Chernobyl personnel, which led to the ignition of hydrogen and the destruction of the reactor. However, some scientists believe that there was a real nuclear explosion. Boiling Hell in a nuclear reactor, there is a nuclear chain reaction. The nucleus of a heavy atom, such as uranium, collides with a neutron, becomes unstable, and disintegrates into two smaller nuclei, the fission products. The fission process releases energy in two or three fast-free neutrons, which in turn cause other uranium nuclei in the nuclear fuel to decay. The number of decays thus increases exponentially, but the chain reaction inside the reactor is controlled, which prevents a nuclear explosion. In thermal nuclear reactors, fast neutrons are not suitable to excite heavy atoms, so their kinetic energy is reduced with a moderator. Slow neutrons, called thermal neutrons, are more likely to cause the decay of uranium-235 atoms used as fuel. In such cases, one speaks of a high interaction cross-section between uranium nuclei and neutrons. Thermal neutrons themselves are so-called because they are in thermodynamic equilibrium with the environment. The heart of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was the RBMK-1000 reactor, a 1,000-megawatt high-power, channel-type reactor. Essentially, it is a graphite cylinder with many holes, channels. The graphite acts as a moderator, and nuclear fuel in fuel elements, fuel rods, is loaded through the technological channels. The fuel elements are made of zirconium, a metal with a very small neutron capture cross-section. They allow neutrons and heat to pass through which heats the fuel, preventing leakage of decay products. Fuel elements can be combined into fuel assemblies, FAs. Fuel assemblies are characteristic of heterogeneous nuclear reactors, in which the moderator is separated from the fuel. RBMK is a single-circuit reactor. Water is used as the coolant, which is partially transformed into steam. Steam and water mixture enter separators, where steam is separated from water and sent to turbine generators. The spent steam is condensed and fed back into the reactor. The RBMK design had a flaw that played a fatal role in the Chernobyl disaster. The thing is that the distance between the channels was too big and too many fast neutrons were slowed down by graphite, turning them into thermal neutrons. They are well absorbed by water, but steam bubbles are constantly formed there, which reduces the absorption characteristics of the coolant. As a result, the reactivity increases, and the water gets even hotter. That is, the RBMK has a fairly high vapor reactivity coefficient, which makes it difficult to control the nuclear reaction. The reactor must be equipped with additional safety systems, and only highly qualified personnel should operate it. It's a mess. On April 25, 1986 the fourth unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was scheduled to be shut down for scheduled repairs and an experiment. Specialists of the research institute Gidroprec suggested a method of emergency power supply of the station's pumps using the kinetic energy of the turbine generator rotating by inertia. This would make it possible to maintain circulation of the coolant in the circuit even in case of power outage until the backup power is turned on. According to the plan, the experiment was to begin when the reactor's thermal capacity was reduced to 700 megawatts. The power was reduced by 50%, 1600 megawatts, and the process of shutting down the reactor was delayed by about 9 hours at the request of Kiev. As soon as the power reduction was resumed, it suddenly dropped to almost zero due to misguided actions of the nuclear power plant personnel and xenon poisoning of the reactor and accumulation of the isotope xenon-135, which decreases reactivity. To cope with the sudden problem, emergency neutron absorbing rods were removed from the RBMK, but the power did not rise above 200 megawatts. 
Despite the unstable operation of the reactor, the experiment began at 1 hour 23 minutes and 4 seconds. The introduction of additional pumps increased the load on the coasting turbine generator, which reduced the volume of water flowing into the reactor core. Together with the high steam coefficient of reactivity, this quickly increased the reactor's power. The attempt to introduce absorption rods due to their unsuccessful design only made the situation worse. Just 43 seconds after the experiment began, the reactor collapsed in one or two powerful explosions. Ends in water. Eyewitnesses claim that the fourth reactor was destroyed in two explosions, the second, the most powerful, occurred a few seconds after the first. The emergency situation is believed to have been caused by a rupture of pipes in the cooling system caused by the rapid evaporation of water. The water or steam reacted with the zirconium and the fuel elements, resulting in the formation of large amounts of hydrogen and its explosion. Swedish scientists believe that two different mechanisms led to the explosions, one of which was nuclear. First, the high steam reactivity contributed to an increase in the volume of superheated steam inside the reactor. As a result, the reactor burst, and its 2,000-ton top lid soared several dozen meters. Because the fuel elements were attached to it, there was an initial leak of nuclear fuel. Second, the accidental lowering of the absorbing rods led to the so-called end effect. At the Chernobyl RBMK-1000, the rods consisted of two parts a neutron absorber and a graphite water displacer. When the rod is introduced into the reactor core, the graphite replaces the neutron absorbing water in the lower part of the channels, which only increases the reactivity coefficient. The number of thermal neutrons increases and the chain reaction becomes uncontrollable. A small nuclear explosion occurs. Fluxes of nuclear fission products penetrated into the hull even before the destruction of the reactor, and then through the thin roof of the power unit entered the atmosphere. For the first time specialists began talking about the nuclear nature of the explosion back in 1986. At that time scientists from the Klopin Radium Institute analyzed the noble gas fractions obtained at the Chiripovets plant where liquid nitrogen and oxygen were produced. Chiripovets is a thousand kilometers north of Chernobyl, and a radioactive cloud passed over the city on April 29. Soviet researchers found that the activity ratio of isotopes 133Se and 133Mse was 44.5 plus or minus 5.5. These isotopes are short-lived products of nuclear decay, indicating a weak nuclear explosion. Swedish scientists calculated how much xenon was formed in the reactor before the explosion, during the explosion, and how the ratios of radioactive isotopes changed until they fell out in Chiripovets. It turned out that the reactivity ratios observed at the plant could have occurred in the event of a nuclear explosion with a capacity of 75 tons in TNT equivalent. According to an analysis of meteorological conditions for the period April 25 to May 5, 1986, xenon isotopes rose to a height of up to 3 kilometers, which prevented it from mixing with the xenon that had formed in the reactor before the accident. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.